Hey gang, in this session, I'm going to be talking to Nigel from The Secret Hamper Company and what he's done in his business, how he left a corporate career to go on this entrepreneurial journey. Let's go. So, Nigel, The Secret Hamper Company, yes. tell me what it is. How did he get there? Basically, um, I took voluntary redundancy from the city. Yeah. I've been in that what did corporate you do? world. What did you do in the city? Uh, I worked in the money markets for many years. It was an amazing career. Did you make loads of money? Uh, made a fair bit. What, what sort of, so we what traded, is the money market trading? So we traded sterling. So we did all the derivatives. So <clears throat> we'd have done interest rates. We'd have traded on those. So on the currency markets, um, you know, volatility is your friend. And, but since the financial crisis in 2008, the markets really sort of you know flattened out and we had no interest rate changes and it was very difficult to you know make money as such um, so it's very very predictable business and i'd always had like an entrepreneurial streak inside me but i kind of fell into a sort of safe quite a safe job that paid well early on so it's very difficult to you know break away from that but then you know a few, a few things happened down the line you know as i spoke earlier you know i lost my dad and that really sort of woke me up a little bit to, you know, we're not immortal. And, you know, if you really want to do something, then you need to, you know, kind of get out of your comfort zone. So when you, um, when you worked in the city, was that stressful, yeah. that job? Yeah, massively. It's like going into the bear pit every day. What time did you get up? Uh, got up at 4.30, left my house at 4.40, because I used to put my gym kit on, had my work clothes packed in my gym bag. And you're giving up the and, gym now. Yeah, as yes, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, but yeah, so, but, you know, the good thing so was, we worked in... up, 4.40, now like onto the train. No, I used to drive. So I used oh. to drive to Canary Wharf because, you know, I, was, I could listen to, funny enough, I used to listen to sort of, you know, motivational CDs and stuff. Um, so wow. I used to listen to those back then. Um, but I'd get into Canary Wharf, I'd be in there for uh, half past five, and then I'd go to the gym till half past six, be at my desk for seven, and, and then that would do, you know, that's the day cracked on, very rarely um, towards the end of my career. What time did you go to bed? Um, probably around about sort of nine, nine thirty. What time Most did you nights, get in? I'd get in on a good night. I could get home by about seven. So, on, you know, depending so on what the eight thirteen. Yeah, two, two hours a, free time a day. Yeah. I mean, I just so, I, I, you know, I listen to people that work up in the city that then go into entrepreneurship. Like, it's not having a life if you only have two hours a day, is it? Oh no, no it's unbelievable. Did you have kids back then? Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Because so, uh, so I mean, you, or did you get to, or saw them for an hour a day? If that, you know, and I saw them at the sort of the. The time when they were like ready to go to bed so you know Tough luckily enough. enough like andrea kept them up to a point where i could literally sort of tuck them down but it was weird i mean especially in the in the sort of winter months you know you'd you wouldn't see your garden or anything like that until the weekend because it's like you <laughs> Man, go i work in the dark like, come home in the dark so, so just so i understand this the structure of this business yes you sort of the, of this life you then took redundancy yeah and did you have some time off? I did because um, I'd done that since I was 18. So I'd known nothing different. And I didn't want to sort of jump out the frying pan and back into the fire. I just needed a little bit of time out to see what kind of interests me. Because, you know, as good as the job was in its day, I mean, we worked through, you know, things like the Iraqi war, um, you know, Margaret Thatcher. We might, when I first started, we had 16 base rate changes in a day. I mean, yeah. it was unbelievable, you know, and then in the end, we didn't have a base rate change for six years. I mean, that's crazy. And the MPC was formed, like the Monetary Policy Committee, and they'd meet, you know, once a month, and we all knew the outcome, and it was very difficult to sort of try and broker your, your bankers and say to them, look, you know, I think this is a very good offer because, you know, because, 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 you know, why, you know, why, you know nothing's changing. Yeah. So it's just really tough. And... You know, you spend more time each month, you get more sort of um, courses that would come online courses. So like, you know, um, so you compliant with, you know, fraud and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you think, blimey neck, I didn't get into this job to do this. You know, yeah, we was, yeah. you know fortunate, I was fortunate to be a part of the, the time when we could go away on ski trips and golf yeah, trips. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was fantastic. We had a really good time, you know. Um, it wasn't quite like Wolf of Wall Street, although yeah. there were those kind of characters around. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it, it kind of, um, it manifested itself. There's an opportunity for voluntary redundancy came up. And I just thought, you know what? I spoke to Andrew, so it's now or never. 
I could sit there and, and just literally just sit there every day. I mean, you know, some days would go past and I wouldn't know how I got to fight, you know, it'd be five o'clock and I think, well, where did that day go? Well, this is once you'd take yeah, one, No, no, once I was in work. Yeah, like, yeah, once yeah. I was in. So once I took the redundancy, we, it was in May, and uh, I just said to Andrew, look, it'd be really, really nice if, you know, we had a little, you know, we got a nice little um, redundancy payout, and I just said it'd be really, really nice if uh, I could just take a few months out. So when it's the kids' summer holidays, um, we can, if it's a sunny day, we can just decide to bugger off for the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never, never had that luxury before because, yeah. you know, you'd have to sort of fight over the holiday book yeah, yeah. and, you know, try and scrap around to get a few days off here and there. Yeah, so yeah. we did that and, you know, we bought an old caravan. I mean, it's a bit of a cliche, but we went down to Cornwall and, you know, snaked our way back across the country back to Essex over a six yeah, weeks yeah, holiday. Yeah, got it, got it. And it was really nice, you know, so, and it's just reconnecting with the kids and stuff, you know. So fast forward, you yes. said, right, well, now I've got to do some work. And you started the secret <clears> of the company. I did, yes. Which confused me a bit. Yeah. But you try to explain it to me many times, but I get the sentiment of it. Yeah. You send hampers to people, but you don't know who they're from. And it mainly goes to people in hospitals and tough people. Well, not that, I mean that initially. To be honest with you, James, when we first started, um, I got inspired to perform a random act of kindness from a co-op ad. Yeah. And some people might remember that, where a youngster left a bag of groceries on his neighbour's doorstep, yeah. and that really resonated with me because in the village that I live, I come across the guy that summer when I was off. Yeah. Um, that was on his own, and it was 23rd of December. It was 10 o'clock at night and this advert come on the TV and I thought, my God, that's, this is the guy. This advert, I'm that guy in the advert and, that's yeah, the, yeah. and this that guy that can't get out is, is my neighbour. So I just jumped in the car, went to Tesco's, filled up a bag of groceries, left it on his doorstep and rung the doorbell and legged it home. And I got home and I just felt like I had fantastic. a purpose in life. Yeah, you know? I just felt alive because in that time of that initial period of taking redundancy, of that excitement, you know, that, oh, I haven't got to do that anymore. I haven't got to, you know, I know it sounds weird, but, you know, sit next to that guy anymore that's really annoying with his elbows there and wearing that really cheap aftershave and stuff like that. It was, I was free, you know, and, yeah. and it was up to me. And so, <clears throat> so after doing that, you yeah. then tried to turn that into a business. Yes. So you doing that for three years. Yeah. So what we, when I first started, the idea was that, you know, when I worked in the city, I sent out hampers. So I used to do the Fortnum and Mason stuff and everything else. And as lovely as they were, probably a half of that, if not more, would end up in the bin yeah. because it was just like fillers and, you know. Stuff people didn't want. Yeah, exactly. So I just thought, you know what, let's try and create something that gave the sender that warm, fuzzy feeling I'd experienced, but would also, you know, make a difference to the recipient, you know, make them feel like there's somebody out there looking out for them. So that was the initial thought process of, of what that was about. And yeah, initially I thought it'd be great if you could send it anonymously and, and just surprise somebody. Because, you know, less, we all know of someone that might have lost their job or circumstances yeah, yeah, changed. Yeah. And if you went up to them and said, look, mate, there's 50 quid, they'll probably say, no, no, I don't want that because the pride steps in. Yeah. And walk away and thought, bloody hell, I could really done with that. But if something were turned up on their doorstep that would get them through a difficult period, then they'd be more willing to accept it because they don't know where it's come from. And it's like, well, look at this, you know? And it gives them a lift, creates a ripple effect because then they, you know, because it's lifted their spirits and their morale, they can then, it might encourage them to do, you know, go out and apply for that job or, you know, rekindle that relationship. Or you just don't know, like all manner of things. But that was the initial sort of thought process. But ultimately, getting down to the bare bones of it, we are an online gifting site. So, you know, there, but we wanted to have a bit of a USP that made us stand out from the crowd. So why choose us? Because, you know, further down the line, we'd like to be able to say that, you know, for our, if you come to us and you want to buy a new baby hamper, then any, you know, we, we could take a percentage of that profit and maybe give it to a children's charity, you know, and likewise with the middle range stuff that could go to the homeless and the, and like the stuff for the people we do in care homes that could go to an elderly charity. So, I mean, that's part of the, game yeah, plan yeah. further down so That's how i understand and how's it gone it's been really hard to be honest because <laughs> <laughs> you know i've i've not come from a business background i've been in a no. corporate world yeah. all that time so realistically for the first probably year maybe longer 18 months so, you know, i've known you for a long time what yes. you, you have a 
an amazing ability to knock on the door and get someone to open it. Yeah. So you've, you know, you know, Charlie Mullins came to one of my events. Within a week, you're on the phone to him when yeah. he's on holiday. You've <laughs> yeah. met Theo Pafitis, Alan Shearer. You know, you just make stuff happen, don't yeah. you? You're very good yeah. at doing that happen. But, and, and what I find with loads and loads of entrepreneurs that I meet that start up, that have the entrepreneurial DNA, which I think you've got, and one of the big things I think entrepreneurial DNA is, is making the impossible possible. Yes. And, and, and you, you, you sort of have that in abundance. It's just you're in a really difficult business that people don't continually want to buy. Yeah. You know, like you know, people don't buy hampers every week, do they? You know, they, no. they, they and and certainly I don't think people want to buy hampers and send people anonymously no. all the time. So you, you're in a what I think is a difficult business where the average transactional value maybe is once a year. So then the gift, but gifting is huge in the United Kingdom. Like, yeah, you know, and and personalised gifting. I mean, not on the high street. You know, fantastic website is built around yeah. personalised gifting. You can sign it off. You usually can put your name on it, which people want. You know, people are buying these photo books you know personalized yes. photo books and that's has bought my fiance has bought them for me they're some of my best favorite presents because yeah. they're personal to me and i just think with your business i just think wow if you could like put some of that in there and we was talking about what if it was my business i would white label it i would have the secret hamper company children's birthday hampers easter hampers christmas hampers so all the websites do the same and then try and weave a message into these ones that when people buy from childrenshampers.co.uk, they're helping someone get a secret hamper. Yeah, yeah. And I just think that is a beautiful business model. Mm. Um, have you heard of Tom's, the shoes? I have, yes. So you buy yeah, one yeah. pair of Tom's and they give another pair of shoes to yeah. someone in uh, around the world that can't afford a pair mm. of shoes. And, and I love, so every time I buy a pair of Tom's, yeah. I'm anonymously doing what you're doing for yes. your business. yeah. Knowing that someone else is getting a pair of shoes yeah. in the world, that feels great. It does, yeah. Now, but I've got my pair of shoes because yeah. human beings, you know, they want to give, you know, but they want to make sure that they're sorted first. Yes. So I don't want to buy someone a pair of shoes if I can't afford a pair of shoes. Yeah. I want to make my pair of shoes. Yeah, of course. Then, then I'm really happy to make sure someone else has got a pair of shoes. Yeah. And I just think that is a beautiful, brilliant business model that you create, you know, 10 white label sites that when someone buys something off of you, they're helping someone else get something mm. in secret. And I just think that's beautiful. Yeah. No, it's a really good idea. I know it is. Yeah. 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 No, thanks <laughs> for that. <laughs> so, so yeah. I think that's going to make your bit, because you say your business is difficult right now. Yeah. But you've had some success stories, haven't you? What's your, what's your success that you've had in the three years? Um, well, we got chosen in the early, you know, quite early on by Theo Papetis. There's a competition he runs on Twitter. Yeah. And that's his way of giving back. Yeah. Um, and he, you tweet Theo on a Sunday night between 5.30 and 7. And, um, you know, you tweet, you know, what's unique about your business? And if chosen, it became so popular that each week he chose six winners and then he'd retweet those winners to his following. Yeah. So the idea is he's not kind of personally endorsing you as such, but he's giving you a platform to yep, get it. out to lots of people. He created a Facebook group where we can all network and, and maybe do business with other uh, SBS winners. And once a year, he puts on a free event in Birmingham that we're all welcome to go to. Uh, I went to one recently and one of his guest speakers was a guy called Sir Tom Hunter of sports division fame. Uh, you know, he's Scotland's first self-made billionaire. And this guy is sitting there on stage, you know, telling his story and, and trying to inspire people. So you get all that. Um, we're fortunate. Fantastic. Sorry. Oh, no, it's just brilliant. <clears throat> no. And then we're really lucky because um, we got chosen as being one of three Essex businesses uh, in 2017 to be part of Small Business Saturday. And the... Um, they count down, this was an uh, initiative started, funny enough, in the States by uh, President Obama uh, to recognise small businesses. So the first Saturday of December, they encouraged people to shop local and support small businesses. And that was incorporated over in this country. And believe it or not, the person that actually got that wheels in motion for that is the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock. And I met him recently at number 11. This, is, this stuff that you yeah. just seem to make happen, don't you? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> most people don't make that brilliant stuff happen. Oh, no. I just, you know, go to number 11 down the street <laughs> yeah. for a cup of tea. You know, that, that is stuff that doesn't happen, no. you know. And no, but that's something, you know, as I say, you've got to, I think, you know, you've, if you are passionate about something, you, and that's, I think, half the battle with, or a lot of the battle, I think, with, 
you know, don't get me wrong, yeah, I've made loads of mistakes and, you know, I think the biggest thing you can do is obviously learn from those and change yeah. it. But also you need to be passionate about what you're doing to get you through those Absolutely, mistakes. Yeah. Because Passion, you know, resilience you know, are all the things yeah. that get you through. But, but, um, yeah. So I've just thought another one, another white label thing is you do hampersforcustomers.co.uk. So yes. if I'm a business owner, yeah, of I course. get a hamper for my customers yeah, and you yeah. sort it all out. Um, so, because we had sort of a coaching session before we came on and put this together again. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I sort of, I was probably a bit harder on you than, well, I've just, <laughs> just been there. Um, but you, this was just tying this stuff up. So what, what you know, we've got a brilliant, we, what we've got, look, look at the massive positives we've got. Yes. We've got you. Yeah. The Secret Hamper has got you, someone that is driven, passionate, resilient, opens doors, great at sales, brilliant lovely person no oh, thank you and and i think <laughs> if you could channel that stuff into these white label things that when people do those things then secret hamper will explode because yes. it's off the back of a really great trading business as well but you know you know you are getting sales in you are getting customers you yeah are, and <clears throat> i think you've got something really good it just yes well, hopefully, it's I mean, all about three things that I believe yeah. create great companies: innovation, marketing, and culture. From the business owner, you know, the innovation has to happen all the time. If you don't innovate, you evaporate. Yeah. And I think what we're talking about here is saying, yeah, this is really good, but we need to innovate over here as well because otherwise, eventually, the business will evaporate. Now that happens all businesses. Mm. If Marks and Spencers don't sort out their clothes problem that they've got right now, yeah. they're going to evaporate. Mm. You know, they can't just live off of creep on doing food all the time. No. They've got these great whacking stores. Hardly anyone's buying Marks and Spencer's gear anymore because it don't look great and they're trying to get Holly Willoughby in to innovate yeah, the product. Of course, yeah. So, you know, no matter what size you are, you have mm. constant innovation. So I for innovation. Next one is M for marketing. We kind of keep innovating that product and keep marketing our product, never stop marketing it. And also want to innovate our marketing all the time. I actually think you have a natural DNA for marketing. Mm. Um, it's just the heading of your product is difficult for people to understand. Yeah. They love it, it's yeah. just difficult for them to understand. That's why I think hampers for Easter. All right, that's a hamper for Easter. Yeah. Hampers for my customers. Well, that's hampers for my customers. Hampers for Christmas. I get it, I get it. And yeah. you can have all these white label things all working off the same website. Boom, shakalaka. And then the last thing, which I think you're brilliant at, is culture. And culture creates sales. If the culture of your business is good, people love it. Mm -hmm. So when I was talking about Tom's, you know, you buy one pair of Tom's, you get that. I love that cultural idea. Yeah. The Disney <clears throat> culture, the Virgin culture, the John Lewis culture. I think your business has got great culture and it's the owner of the business to make sure when we bring employees that they believe in that culture if you make that inc innovation marketing culture you can have a great thing you've done three great years of hard work you understand this business inside and out you know where to get your product from you know how to deliver your product you know customer service if you just make right i've got to innovate this a bit more yes and then i'll get it to where i want to get to yeah and even the most successful businesses in the world must never stop innovating no, not at all. sony stopped innovating apple took over yeah you know, and, and I think Apple are not innovating really enough now, and you're seeing Samsung catching them up. Where was Samsung seven years ago? Mm. Nowhere. Like, Samsung a powerhouse of technology now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's my views. Anything yeah. you'd like to add, mate? No, I think it's really good, really valuable stuff. Because... Well, you can watch this back now, you never <coughs> yeah. forget it. You listen to no, it. No, exactly, yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really valuable, and, you know, you've got a point. You've been around business, you know, you've always been in business. So, you know, well, for I've somebody... I've made loads of mistakes, mate. Yeah. So I, I set up a stretch limousine company. Can yeah. you scale it? I yeah. hated it. You know, it's like really, I had party shops. I had a chain of party shops, some, one in Lakeside Shopping Centre. Yeah. You know, and like they were really hard because your customers only bought from you once and, you know, the business rates were high and the rent was high and the product margins weren't good enough. And all of these things have, like, powered me up with understanding. And I'm still working really hard and have problems in my business now. We have to keep innovating stuff because the market keeps on changing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, innovation marketing culture is where I'm, dum, dum, dum. It's where I'm working all the time. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it comes out down to, you know, you see me probably doing, you're running four companies. The company you are today, the company you really want to be, company three is a media marketing company that pushes leads into companies one and two, and number four is a, a property company that 
build up a slow pound pension fund so that when you want to leverage again and really innovate the company you can take and use that security to really pump into companies one and two so you look at marks and spencers right you know that they have not innovated but they don't really, they've got all of this real estate where they can use a security to pump and that's their company four yeah. to pump back into companies one and two you know they got shares and stuff like that so assets properties and shares in company four that you can leverage off of to re-innovate the company. Um, and, and I think well, you're, the company you are today needs to be, right, okay, we're gonna you know, make some money, we're gonna build this up, but the company we really wanna be is you know, a charitable, brilliant, lovely yeah. company that does really great things, and that's a secret hamper company. And But company one is providing loads and loads of customers, building up a great profitable business so that it can pump into company two, yeah. which will be doing secret hamper on steroids then. Mm. Yeah, but it makes you've got sense. company one, which is the model <clears throat> yeah. we are today, it needs to be profitable and cash flowing. Yeah, no, most definitely. No, thank you very much. No, I've enjoyed it's it, Nigel. No, well, good. You're I mean, an amazing person. No, thanks. How can people find out about you if they do want to send a hamper? Um, just go onto our website, secrethamper.com. Uh, talking about innovation, we've got this initiative at the moment for the NHS. Uh, so, um, to, 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 to just quickly before we go, just say some of the stuff you've done for, with the NHS because it's a beautiful story. Yeah, so basically, um, it's the NHS's 70th anniversary, as you know. Yeah. And we just thought that we need to be able to give back on a big scale. We've all used the NHS. We all know people that work for the NHS, um, and the chances are we all will use the NHS. You know, we've all come into the world via the NHS. Um, and my youngest, for example, if it wasn't for them, he wouldn't be here today, and probably my wife, because it all went a bit messy at the last, you know, last knockings. But so to give back to them on a big scale is really important. So uh, we just thought we will try and resonate, you know, keep it all in tune with the 70 theme. So we want to send 70 hampers into a designated hospital um, to 70 hospitals around the UK, basically. Really? The cost of the hamper is 70 quid. So we aimed it initially at businesses because we thought, you know, 70 pounds for a business shouldn't be a lot of a spend, really. Um, when those hampers go in, there's a personalised letter in there so the recipients know who sent it in. There's enough products across those 70 boxes that go into a hospital to reach three to 4,000 people at a time. So yeah. it creates a massive um, yeah. feel-good morale boosting exercise within the hospital. We've seen that um, when we, we went to uh, Chelmsford. We did it recently in Newcastle and we're about to do it again in Birmingham. Did you recall all that um, video? Yeah, yeah. And it, well, actually, the Newcastle one went out on the BBC and ITV Fantastic. News. Um, and so it have was, you had business off the back of this? Yeah, we've had a few people, yeah, from businesses that haven't known us, uh, especially um, in the run-up to Christmas. That put Did in, you put on every product, is there a sticker sound from the secret hamper? Um, not on the actual products themselves, no. That is a good point because we've, we want to... Because so, if they're separating it, no one knows Yeah, exactly, it's... exactly. So, I mean, the idea is those boxes, when they arrive, they get put into a staff room on a ward or in an office and people just come in and have a little bit of a divvy up. Um, and then, you know, they get something. Um, so, and we use locally sourced products too. So, the good thing is those guys that we use, we kind of promote them. So, we're helping them in a way get into places that they wouldn't necessarily always get into. So... You know, it's, it's an all-round feel-good exercise. But um, if successful, if you work on the average that when we deliver 70 boxes to a hospital, they reach 3,000 people, that could be a hell of a lot of people over the UK that, yeah. you know... Yeah. Like you, you've got the foundations, it's just... In, it's I've kind of done, done it. Uh, well, can I allow to say a yeah. swear word? Ask about face, really. <laughs> 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 but, um, you yeah, know, I've kind of like... Jump right in at the yeah. at the bit, and but you know, as I say, with people like you around, then that, you'll put me on a straight and narrow. Do you watch our videos? I do. Yeah. You need to. I'm going to send you a copy of my book for free, getting customers. Right. Okay. Thank you. When that comes, we're, we're, the aim of that. Well, I've seen you typing it up. So yeah. you, you're saying. 14th of yeah. June. It's yeah. Coming out. Fantastic. That's my birthday. Excellent. I expect a secret hamper. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Note to self. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that that would be, you know, I, I just think you've got something. It's just in the, you know, you're playing all the right notes, just yeah. in the right order. Yeah, you know, exactly, yeah. It's, um, 
you know, I just need to, you know, tune my piano a bit better. But no one's, but, the, the, the most difficult thing about being a business owner, you go and work for a company, say you want to be a doctor, there's a, you know, a script of how you get taught to be a doctor. Yes. And you don't veer off it, you know, and, and that's what I like about regulated businesses. You know, like I look at our day nursery business, Ofsted, and we follow a seven key areas of learning, and, and it, it's a framework that we follow, and so does every other nursery in the country, and you've yeah. got this framework. You're like, when you're a business owner, like an entrepreneur, you're the judge, jury, and executioner, yeah. and that can be so dangerous yeah. because you can literally decide what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, and there is no constraints on, no. well, this is what we've done before, and this worked really successfully. Yes. Um, the only thing I always tell people is, you know, you know, consume more videos from people that have been there, done it, listen to more podcasts, read more books, yeah. and you just you do pick up stuff and Absolutely. you get put on the straight and narrow. Yeah, most definitely, and, and it is a really lonely place as well. So. You know, coming you know, to like events that like you put on are really great because you get to talk to other businesses yeah. and then you realise that actually it's just not me that's maybe done something wrong this week. You know, there's other people out there yeah, and this yeah, is how yeah. they've turned it around and so forth. So, you know, I have to say I do go through massive peaks and troughs of, of one minute, you know, you feel like you're flying high and you're invincible and, and the next minute you're right. like, what on earth am I doing? You know, like, <clears throat> yeah. I have some dark times. You yeah. know, like, you know, sometimes I think, oh my God, oh my God, and then yes, and yes, and yes. It's like, you know, it's like I call it business owner bipolar. You yeah. know, you're up and <laughs> yeah. you're down, and you just got to, you know, get through. And yeah. but what what most what helps you get through that is knowing what what the business looks like when it's finished. Yes. and that's why you've got to identify your one, two, three, four companies. Yes, and. And if you can't say, this is the profit the business makes when it's finished, this is the revenue to make that profit happen, this is what the team will look like, this is the culture and this is the finish date, you'll never feel like you've accomplished anything. Yeah, yeah. We'll do that off camera yeah. when we're finished. Perfect. Right, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very for much. coming. Let's give him a round of applause. It was fantastic. <laughs> See Thank you very you. soon. Bye-bye.